Sprouts contain an unusually high content of living enzymes. These enzymes help in boosting your metabolic processes and improve chemical reactions within the body, specifically when it comes to digestion. Enzymes help break down the food effectively and enhance the absorption of nutrients by the digestive tract. Basically, these, this fiber bulks up the stool, making it easier to pass through the digestive system and get rid of toxins. Sprouts also have a lot of dietary fiber that helps regulate digestion. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath, and I love sharing natural remedies with people for better health. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years because they work. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you like this video and that you give me a thumbs up if you're viewing it on a recording. Uh, share with others and comment. I love hearing from you. So if you subscribe and click on the little notification bell, you'll be notified each time I give a class. And that's about once a week. This month, October, we've been focusing on nutritious foods and food that will enhance our health. Now I talked about chicken soup and how beneficial that is. Ferments, how important it is to get fermented food in your diet. We've talked about apples and the importance of an apple a day. And it's true, it keeps the doctor away. So today we're gonna to talk about sprouts. Now I could have talked about bone broth and a bunch of other things, but today I chose sprouts because during the fall and winter months, people who garden like I do, just happen to enjoy watching something grow. And sprouts is a way to do it. We've been sprouting already. These are uh, legumes and uh, there's lentils and chickpeas and regular peas and all kinds of uh, good legumes. And we're gonna talk about how that differs from alfalfa. Now maybe alfalfa is something you've seen sprouted. Here's alfalfa and here's some legumes. Um, maybe you've seen mung beans before. Those are kind of the usual seeds that people see. But how about a zuki or cabbage, chives, red clover, fenugreek? Garbanzo is a great bean to, to sprout lentils and mustard and peas and radishes and black sunflower. Some sprouts are eaten fresh and raw. Others, including all grain and starchy bean sprouts, should be cooked. So we'll be having these in a stir fry, probably tomorrow. They're getting there, but they're not quite there yet. So when we sprout, we're actually plumping up the inside to burst through the shell that protects it. And this protective shell has, has a protection on it so that it keeps the inside intact until it's ready to grow or germinate. So these, um, seeds and sprouts and even nuts and grains uh, contain a lot of wonderful vitamins and minerals, but it isn't until they're sprouted that they actually provide the nutrition that's available to our body. So I'm going to talk about different kinds of sprouts, not just by water, but there's something called microgreens that are put in soil and grown. So the difference between a sprout and a microgreen is that a sprout takes about two to three days, maybe even two, two days. And grains basically 
If you sprout it seven hours or overnight, you can dry it and use it. Microgreens take about two to three weeks and then you cut them and they'll keep on growing just like your lettuce in the garden. And it's a wonderful source of raw food that you can add to your diet to increase nutrition. Now, microgreens actually need sunlight or a special lamp that provides the uh, warmth and light that it needs to grow, whereas seeds don't. So they're a great thing to have uh, a young child do that they can be responsible for rinsing it twice a day, like when they brush their teeth and they can watch them grow. And that's pretty exciting uh, experiment to do with children. Older children might want to be responsible for microgreens where you can just spray water on them and uh, water them every third day. But they need to be spritzed uh, like twice, sometimes three times a day, depending on how dry your air is. <clears throat> So they're a wonderful thing to do. Uh, you can add these to, um, like these kind, you would add to uh, like a condiment type thing. You wouldn't cook with them. Whereas the beans and the peas, uh, you do want to cook those. Uh, by sprouting, you're kind of using up some of that starch in the process of growing and it makes it far more nutrient available to you and easier to digest. <clears throat> so there are grains now that are becoming more and more popular like you can buy sprouted wheat flour and cook with it. <clears throat> I've, seen, I've seen this brand even at Costco where you can get sprouted rolled oats. And it just makes it easier for the body to break down. If you have problems with a little bit of gas or whatever, try doing a sprouted grain because uh, I find that they're just so much easier to digest. Uh, <clears throat> the sprouted oatmeal is becoming quite popular and um, I, I really like it. Uh, you can cook with it and uh, add some raisins or uh, craisins or any other kind of uh, dried fruit. It really is helpful for um, digestion and bumping up nutrition. So we're getting into fall and winter. Yes, we have to recognize that. And these warm foods are much better for us to, to um, enjoy during these winter months. So let me just pin my video there. And <clears throat> so raw nuts, oh, I want to talk a bit about the chia pet. Remember these, well, I'm old enough, I remember these. Who knew we could eat the greens, you know? But it was such a great uh, way to have fun and grow good food. And yet <clears throat> we were never told how nutritious these sprouts could be. So that's another way that you can get children involved in growing and creating a winter garden. So soaking nuts and seeds. Uh, a lot of people have trouble digesting nuts and seeds and when you sprout them it makes that nutrition so much easier and more available for um for you to get that good nutrition in so <clears throat> these all nuts and seeds potatoes any starchy vegetable is going to be coated with an enzyme inhibitor that means that it has a coating of phytic acid. And this phytic acid is okay for animals, but humans don't break that down real well. 
And so it slows down digestion and makes it harder for us to get the nutrients that are available in these foods. So I had a saying here from Dr. Bacola. Oh, I think it's coming up yet. No, let me just check here. I, um, I have a link to his material on sprouts and the availability of it. I'll put it in the description below. But it's a wonderful article on the reason for sprouts. Now, I love marysnest.com because on her YouTube videos, she shows you how to make things like fermented foods and sour um, sauerkraut, uh, kombucha. Uh, she shows you how to to make sourdough and. So these active foods actually support better digestion and realize that digestion is like when fuel in your car combusts. If you put good fuel in your car, you're going to get a smoother running vehicle. It's not gonna be jumping and halting and doing all those crazy things. And the same thing with us. If we put in good active food, we're going to have more energy and you won't have to be dependent on coffee and things that stimulate the body like energy drinks. Good food should do that for you. So on the raw nuts, um, they have a notable phytic acid and uh, this is a form of bound phosphorus, which serves as a physiological protectant and um, antioxidant for the plant. While this phytic acid is useful to safeguard the seeds, they aren't good for us because we can't break that down. So when a seed is germinated, uh, it opens up the availability of all of these wonderful minerals and uh, vitamins that help us to become healthier. So um, most statements extolling the health benefits of raw nuts and seeds are inaccurate because they fail to tell you that they should be soaked first. And that's, you know, when corn was discovered by, when I say the white people, they didn't take into consideration that the first Americans soaked their corn, dried the corn, and then ground it. And what we did, we skipped that soaking method. And by doing that, we left that phytic acid still intact and ground it with the corn and it made it undigestible for most people. So it is interesting how we can skip some steps and make things difficult for ourselves. So make sure you soak your nuts and it only takes seven hours. You can do it overnight if you want to, but basically what you're doing I've, I've done almonds before, and when you soak them for like seven, eight hours, and you drain the water off, you can just slip those skins, and they just fall right off because the inside of the nut has swollen, and it makes it easier to just slip that skin. Then you can dry them. Some people recommend putting them in a dehydrator, or you can put them on a, a sheet pan that's covered with some uh, paper. You, you can do either wax paper or parchment paper and put them in the oven with the oven light on and that way they will dry out and then you can, you can toast them as you're ready to use them. You can freeze them to keep them more bioavailable and you can 
crunch them up. You could make nut butters out of it. You can soak them for a longer period of time and make a nut milk. There are wonderful recipes on the internet. I'll be sure to link some things in the, the description below. So click on that little down arrow and you'll see the description. Uh, if you're finding that this video has been helpful for you, give me a thumbs up, um, like, share, uh, comment. I love hearing from you. And I hope that you continue to watch these videos. I have over 60 different videos on health, different health subjects. Uh, you will find the links to my video on uh, fermented foods and some of each one has in the description either the links of where you can find out more information or the science behind what I talk about. So keep focusing on gratitude. Next week is our presidential election. I won't be doing a class next week. I will be praying for a good outcome. Um, the month of November, I'm going to focus on all the wonderful things that I'm grateful for and hope that you send me some comments on things that you're grateful for. And that's what I'm going to focus on in November is gratitude because when you focus on good things like that, good things will come back to you. Life is a boomerang and you have to focus on the good in life. And oftentimes I remind myself that God has a plan and all I have to do is just swing into it, whatever that plan is. So um, don't forget to email me with personal uh, situations. I will be happy to answer you or direct you to a resource. Uh, I'm so grateful for all of nature, the beauty around us, uh, the good food that God has given us to eat. And until next time, this is Dr. Mary for the health of it.